Uh, so the study I'll be discussing today uh, is uh, an interim result of the phase 1b study of a subcutaneous isotuximab uh, delivered uh, via an on-body delivery system, so OBDS, in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone in patients with relapsed refractory and multiple myeloma. Uh, so currently, uh, IV isotuximab is approved for the treatment of relapsed refractory myeloma in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone based on the pivotal results of the ICARIA study. Now, a subcutaneous isotuximab is more convenient and will uh, result in a less burden uh, in, on resource in the hospital system. And so this phase 1b uh, study uh, compares uh, subcutaneous isotuximab uh, with uh, IV isotuximab uh, uh, in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone. And previously, in fact, we've reported the result of the first cohort of this uh, study that demonstrated that uh, subcutaneous isotuximab uh, resulted in a similar efficacy and safety compared to IV isotuximab. Uh, uh, and uh, in this study, uh, what we're doing is reporting uh, the uh, result of the expanded cohort of patients receiving uh, subcutaneous isotuximab uh, via an on-body delivery system, so that's an OBDS, uh, at the recommended phase two dose uh, of 1,400 milligram. And the OBDS is a, a, it's a wearable uh, injectable uh, bolus injector that can be applied uh, on the abdomen. Uh, so overall, uh, 56 patients were enrolled into the study. Uh, 12 were in the IV uh, cohort. Uh, 12 were in the subcut uh, 1,000 milligram cohort. Uh, 10 patients were in the uh, subcut 1,400 milligram uh, cohort, and overall 22 patients was, uh, were in the uh, OBDS uh, cohort. Uh, both IV and uh, subcut isotuximab were given weekly uh, for four weeks, then every two weeks until a disease progression. The primary endpoint of the study uh, was uh, safe, safety, uh, including injection site reactions as well as PK, and the secondary endpoints of the study, uh, the main ones were overall response rate and progression-free survival. So in terms of uh, safety, uh, the uh, total uh, uh, all-causality uh, grade three or more treatment-related adverse events were very similar across all cohorts. Uh, injections or infusion reactions were quite low, uh, occurring in less than 10% uh, in each cohorts. Uh, and all were grade two and all occurred only during the first administration. And what was important was that uh, the a subgroup of patients in the OBDS cohort uh, did not have any injection uh, in, uh, in, uh, reactions at all. Uh, local tolerability was excellent in the OBDS uh, cohort uh, in that only five out of the 22 patients experienced uh, local site injections, uh, reactions, uh, and, and seven episodes overall out of the 305 uh, 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 administrations. Uh, so that was uh, quite impressive. Uh, the median time of injections uh, via the OBDS was uh, uh, 10 minutes for the first injections and subsequent injections. Uh, and in terms of uh, efficacy, uh, for the cohort of patients who received the recommended phase two dose, uh, i.e. the uh, subcut 1,400 milligram plus the OBDS cohort, the overall response rate uh, was uh, 78%. Um, the median progression-free survival for the IV cohort of patients was 22 months. Uh, it was uh, 12 months uh, for the subcut uh, 1,000 milligram and not reached. Uh, for the cohort of patients who uh, received the 1,400 milligram via subcut injections or the OBDS uh, cohort of patients. So overall, uh, this data uh, can uh, allow us to conclude that uh, subcutaneous isotuximab uh, administered uh, at the recommended phase two dose of 1,400 milligram via OBDS uh, had similar efficacy uh, to the IV uh, isotuximab uh, and with no injection, uh, uh, injection reactions and uh, with excellent local uh, tolerability. And uh, with efficacy, uh, that was uh, similar to what we would expect uh, with IV isotuximab in the phase three ICARIA study. And so in summary, uh, subcutaneous uh, isotuximab via OBDS uh, is uh, very feasible uh, with a very uh, a, a, a short injection time 
uh, and uh, can provide a very convenient uh, hands-free alternative options for our patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. So in terms of where we go from here, uh, follow-up for this uh, study is still ongoing and the final results uh, in the near future will hopefully pave way for the availability of subcutaneous isotuximab uh, administered via the OBDS uh, device uh, and which will significantly improve quality of life for our patients with myeloma and reduce the resource burden on our hospitals. Mm -hmm.